These five chefs are all hoping to become the next professional MasterChef champion. Today, they face their first challenge, three tests set by chef Monica Galetti, seasoned diner Greg Wallace, and two Michelin-starred chef Marcus Waring. To impress Marcus Waring would be absolutely fantastic. I'm disciplined, I'm determined, but also pretty laid back, so I can sort of take the rough of the smooth, if you like. I'm very excited about this competition, and I believe uh, it will be open doors and uh, it will be great. <laughs> Only the best will make it through to the quarter-final. This is a big, big chance for chefs to really come and show their personality. I love professional MasterChef. I get to sample some of the best food I've ever had. And I mean that, ever had. Welcome to Professional MasterChef. Your chance to make an impact. If you manage to impress us, who knows where this could end. This is your first time in the MasterChef kitchen. We're looking for a real good plate of food from you. One of you will be going home at the end of this round. One hour to impress, to show your class. Off you go. I like what I do, yeah, I really like it. I've been working in uh, corporate catering for six months, but I've been a chef for 12 years, started in the Caribbean, finishing in France, moved to London. I met my wife here. I really like London, to be honest. It's a great experience, great life. I love to cook Mediterranean food, French classic as well, and fusion. I like colorful dish, make it fancy and, uh, yeah. <laughs> Hiya, Daniel. I'm good, thank you. What are you making for us? A jerk quail. Jerk quail? quail yeah, I use a, a jerk uh, season as a Caribbean flavor and bring it to the quail, basically, and uh, combine all this uh, flavor together, so. Wow, a jerk quail. Yeah. Daniel, I think your food is like your accent. It sounds partly Caribbean, partly French. Exactly, where I'm come from, Martinique, yeah. Beautiful island. You've brought these babies with you. Yes, exactly. Very hot. Scotch. Scotch bonnet. bonnet. I'm really excited by your Caribbean flavours with, with French technique. Thank you very much. Thank you, Daniel. Thank you very much. Daniel is trying to bring the jerk chicken idea to fine dining, but with the quail. And he's making a stuffing. Sour cherry, pork and apricots. That's so exciting. You've just got to look at this guy to love him. His smile, his whole Caribbean French attitude. What a lovely combination. I just hope with the chili, he just doesn't put too much on there because that can really destroy a dish. You've had 20 minutes. I entered MasterChef because I wanted to challenge myself. I work in a large hotel in Taunton. I'm the senior sous chef. Marcus Waring is one of my favourite chefs. I can compare myself in certain ways to him, not in accomplishments, but one day, hopefully. I'd like to impress him with the fact that I use traditional methods in everything I do. And you can't fault traditionally cooked food. And hopefully, fingers crossed, one day he might. Come looking for me. Tell me, what are you doing? I am doing uh, pan fried scallops with seared pork pancetta, mm. Joao Allegrec, and pea puree. One yeah. of my favourite dishes, so. 
can you show me and Chef what's written on your right arm? Just say yes, Chef. <laughs> you don't have a great deal of kit on your bench? No. I don't think kitchens necessarily need that much kit. Water baths, not a fan of. I like good pan-roasted lamb, pan-roasted beef. Well done, I like your attitude. Thank you. Old-fashioned cooking, classics, are part of our past and we need to know them to know how to move forward. Don't let yourself down. I won't. I love the idea. The scallops, the girolles, the pancetta cooked, the peas as well for the freshness. Scallops, very expensive ingredient, matched with pancetta, it is absolutely stunning. I hope he trims that pancetta down and removes the bone off the side and the brown bits. We don't want too much of that in his dish. It sounds a very simple dish, but simple done right can equal perfection. Mm. I worked in call centres and offices for nearly 10 years. I wasn't happy doing those jobs, so I decided to have a drastic change of career. I work at a golf club in Stoke on Trent, junior sous chef. Chef on Lee Ballyport. Chef on Chips Valentine. We do traditional pub favourites as well as some higher end dishes. It's hard work, but I've also never been happier, so definitely the right decision. Walking into the MasterChef kitchen with only a couple of years of experience is, is daunting, but I don't think experience is everything. And I think I, I can go far. Hiya, Ben. Hello. How are you? I'm all right, thank you. In two years into cooking, you're now a MasterChef professional. Exactly. Wow, speed exactly. track into that. It is, yeah, but it's, uh, I think I'm ready for it. I think I am pretty good. I think I deserve to be here. What are you making for us? Making a cumin and coriander spice lamb rump, which is cooking sous vide, carrot puree, pickled carrot and pickled cucumber, and a peanut crusted potato croquette. That's slightly unusual. I think that the flavours work, it's a nice balance, the pickle cuts through the richness of the lamb. Is this your style of cooking? Yeah, this is my style of cooking. I think it reflects me as a, as a chef. It's not on the menu where we work, it's, it's something I've created. Thank you, Ben. Cheers. Rump is a beautiful cut of meat of the lamb. It is looked upon as a second-class joint, but it has big flavour. It's one of those working joints, so it needs a bit of tenderising. I think the water bath is a good idea. I hope he takes it out the bag and then roasts it to give it more of that nutty bottom flavour. I like the croquette idea with the peanuts around the outside. The carrots and the pickle, they've all got to be balanced right. Interesting dish. I work for an event company. I'm the sous chef, so I'm looking after all sections of the kitchen. We do weddings, bar mitzvahs, private corporate functions, so we could do anything from three course sit down to a, to a huge barbecue. This setup kind of suits my lifestyle at the moment. Uh, we've got a young baby, so it gives me the kind of flexibility to spend more time with her. I've never done a competition before, so I think it'd be a good experience. I think a good chef is someone who's passionate, uh, keeps a cool head, and is organised. What are you making for us? I'm making a caramelised apple, Braeburn apple. And with that, I'm going to do a Granny Smith puree with some candied walnuts and puff pastry. Are you a pastry chef? Uh, no, I'm not. So why have you started off with a, with a pastry? I think it's a bit braver. Uh, I've trained in pastry. Um, I like to see myself as a good all-rounder in the kitchen. In event catering, you're dealing with big numbers. That's right, yeah. Is this dish something that would be on a banquet, or is this something that you think is so special it could be served in a fine dining restaurant? Um, it could definitely be in a restaurant, yeah, absolutely. You've done this dish before, right? I have, indeed. Good man, Richard, thank you. Thank you. It sounds very, very simple, but it's going to take a lot of skill to get a baked apple right. He's making puff pastry, caramel. There's quite a lot of things going on. I hope he can get this dish right. Putting a creme patissier inside the apple. Creme patissier is a beautiful flavoured cream. I hope it's been passed and the lumps are taken out of it. And you want that fantastic, rich flavour of set custard. It's delicious. 15 minutes left. That's all you got. 
I work in a 50 cover restaurant in Newcastle. I'd like the rest of the UK to know that there is brilliant chefs in the northeast of England. My role here is sous chef. Predominantly we do tasting menus, modern European food. I'm very confident in the style of food that I cook. Can I win it? Of course I can. Danny, your hands are shaking. What's going on? Uh, just a little bit nervous, Greg. Don't be nervous, because you're a bit too big for me to cuddle. <laughs> <laughs> what are you going to make for us, Danny? Um, I'm making uh, poached quail with quail leg, uh, some raisin puree, some pickled golden raisins. Why poach it? Uh, it just keeps the breast moist. So you don't want to roast it? You don't, you'd rather I'm going to blowtorch it. it afterwards. Right. Uh, the blowtorch, obviously, just for the bitter notes on the skin works well against the uh, sweet raisin puree. Have you always wanted to be a chef, Danny? No, um, I was destined to go in the army um, until I got a kitchen potter's job at 14. And then from there, I decided to become a chef. I thought it was a nice little, nice little life inside all days. Don't want to put you under any pressure, but I really like the sound of your dish. Good luck. I love the idea of these flavors, the quail, the raisin puree and the remoulade, the celery act that's been coated in mustard mayonnaise. The poaching of the bird is going to keep the bird nice and moist. As long as it's got some aromats and seasoning into the stock, it could be a really good enhancement to the flavour. And then just giving a little bit of caramelisation. But Danny's blowtorching it, and that's an unusual thing. Yes, my concern is when you blowtorch it, it can just burn that skin. You have four minutes left. Come on, come on, final touches. That's it. Stop. Stop. Sam, up you come, please. Twenty-six-year-old Sam has used classic cooking methods to make scallops with pea puree, smoked pancetta, and girole à la grecque, which is girole in an olive oil, lemon, herb, and shallot dressing. Notice how we keep going back for more. <laughs> what a fantastic plate of food, Sam. Really, really good. I think the texture of the scallop is stunning. It's so sweet inside. Fantastic. You've retained that beautiful moisture by sealing them the right way. The puree, delicious. The pancetta absolutely works beautifully well. And of course, those stunning little girolles. I'll be very, very happy to eat that in a restaurant, I'd be very happy to serve that in my restaurant. Wow, mate, that's praise. That's praise. That's a lovely, mm. lovely flavour journey to go on, honestly, mate. That is what us unprofessionals call yummy. Everything here you've done perfectly. It's your, your simple take on food. I love it. Keep it up. And I think it's a great start to your journey, MasterChef. If you continue cooking like that, it's going to be a long journey. You, you all right? Yeah. Well done, Sam. Oh, that bit just slipped off. There you go. Thank you. Good luck. I'm overwhelmed. I'm ecstatic, to be honest. I, I am very happy. <laughs> Twenty-nine-year-old Ben's dish is cumin and coriander spiced lamb rump with a peanut-crusted potato croquette, carrot puree and pickled carrots and cucumber. That's a big plate of food, Ben. <laughs> big guy, big appetite. <laughs> so it's for you or for us? 
it's for everyone. <laughs> <laughs> Good answer. The sort of good and bad with this dish, I think the cooking of the lamb and the tenderness of it is absolutely excellent. The pickled vegetables on top are a nice refreshing touch, but then I don't really feel that they go with a lamb rump. For me, it's really overpowering the lamb. It's so strong and the two of them together should, should never happen. Okay. I love it. Your flavours, sweet lamb, cumin, sweet, rich carrot puree and the sharp pickled veg for me is an absolute delight. But I'm not a fan of the peanuts. I don't really know what the peanuts are doing there. The peanuts get in the way. OK, thank you, Ben. Thank you very much. Thanks, Thanks ben. ben. Thank you. I really like that. Obviously. <laughs> I really like that. Oh, it was great. At least I'm pleasing someone if I split the judges, but... Um... Is it will be nice to, to please them all, so maybe if I stay in, hopefully that's my next, uh, next aim. Thirty-two-year-old events chef Richard has served a caramelised Braben apple filled with creme patissiere and topped with candied walnuts. It's served with a puff pastry shard and a Granny Smith puree. I hope that tastes as good as it looks. I love that. I love the Braben apple. You've maintained the flavour. You've also kept a little bit of the texture. I love the freshness of the Granny Smith apple on the plate. It just really freshens the palate. The creme patissier in the middle, I love creme patissier. I just love more of it, you know. Give me more, make a bigger hole and put more in there. You say baked apple, and you're like, really, what's so special about baked apple and a bit of pastry? Well, what's special about it is cooking it properly. Good on you. Thank you. It's a nice dish, but actually, I find it a little bit dull. It's a nice you're dish. You're a pudding man. I know. You are. Apart from the Granny Smith sharpness, it's all one flavour. I just wouldn't write letters home about it. Yeah. Ignore him. <laughs> Thank you. Thank Thanks, you. Thank you, sir. He doesn't care. You two liked it. That's enough for him. Shame that Greg Pudding Man didn't really think it was amazing, but um, overall, I'm really happy. Thirty-three-year-old Daniel's dish is roasted jerk quail stuffed with pork, apricot and sour cherries and served with sweet potato and green beans. I'm not sure how I feel about having the quail opened up and facing me so I'm looking down at the stuffing. Because you can't pretty the stuffing up. That's the problem. I said already that looks better. Yes. Daniel, I don't know what happened because I don't get any of the spices or, or not much of it here, of, of that marinade. I love chilli and I can't taste any at all. Jerk for me is salty, spicy, a bit of heat and I'm not getting it at all. The best bit on the plate is the sweet potato. It's cooked all the way through and the beans are beautiful and green, but it's average, Daniel. Daniel, thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Daniel. Thank you. Yeah, a little bit disappointed, yeah. But uh, learn from it. Last up is 24-year-old sous chef Danny with his poached and blow-torched quail, served with celeriac remoulade, raisin puree, Pickled sultanas and a hazelnut dressing with toasted hazelnuts. It looks really lovely. Oh, 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 oh. 
Mate, that is good. That bird is as soft as you like. You hardly have to chew it. You've got sweetness in there. You've got a little bit of acidity as well. There's a crunch of a nut. I love it. I've got to say, I was worried when you were going to torch it. I thought you would actually really burn that skin. But it's only lightly charred. And this gives it a light smokiness to this dish. I can make this quite clear. Do you want to be noticed in cooking? That is it. <laughs> <laughs> You've nailed it. Oh, oh. Is that waving a flag for the North East? I certainly hope so. Good lad. Good job, well done. Keep it going, Danny. That was fantastic. Fantastic. Over the moon. If it carries on like that, <laughs> I'll be fine. Really, really good lot here today. I'm so happy. There were some of the best dishes I've eaten in the whole competition. Danny, the tall, shaky Geordie, <laughs> was fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. Absolutely stunning. That plate could sit in any fine, 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 fine restaurant in this country, anywhere. We all loved Sam's scallop dish. Mm. Delicious. He can cook a decent scallop. The pea puree was fantastic. The bacon wasn't too salty and complemented the texture of the scallop beautifully well. I thought Richard's baked Braeburn apple was a really pretty, smart-looking mm. plate. I wasn't wowed by its flavour. The puff pastry was cooked to perfection. The Granny Smith puree on the plate just brought the beautiful freshness to your palate. That's not an easy thing to do, Greg, and I, I like that. Richard made a great dessert today. In a room full of very good cooks, Daniel and Ben look a little bit off the pace. Ben's dish lacked finesse, but I thought the flavours were great. But we couldn't reach agreement between the three of us. Peanuts for me with pickled veg and lamb, no. I was willing to try it, but I don't want it again. I'd be disappointed to leave. I want to stay in this competition. Daniel gave us the not quite jerk quail. It wasn't a complete dish by any stretch of the imagination. Turned out for me, just being roast quail with some veg. I'm in danger, definitely. I think I'm in danger. Guys, it's a difficult decision, but I think we all know who it is. That was fabulous. You guys cooked your hearts out, and that's what I wanted to see. But we do have to send one of you home. We have made a decision. And the chef leaving the competition is... Daniel. Thank you, Daniel. Thank you, Daniel. It's a funny game room you now, but that's a game, you know. We show up the best to the guys. The rest of you, very well done. This promises to be a cracking competition. Looking forward to seeing you guys again, which we will very soon. Don't we? Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> We've got four contestants now for this skills test. What are you going to get them to do? I'd like them to make us three different canapes from a blini, a crostini and a volvant. This is marvellous! They've got some crab meat, there's avocados, some figs, some smoked salmon and then various bits of spices. And this is going to show their creativity. I want to see something more than a slice of salmon on a bit of toast. How long have they got, Monica? They have 15 minutes. First thing Greg is going to do is make the volleyball. Just going to cut down the middle. We don't want to cut all the way through the bottom. So what happens is they all rise, but because you've cut down, you're then able to run a little knife and dig it out. Ah. I'm going to do my crostini. Wow, that is really thin. A little bit of oil. 
while they're cooking and heating up, I'm going to look at some fillings. So the first one I'm going to knock out is the crab. I'm going to use some of the mascarpone with it. So here I've got some spices, a bit of salt in there as well. Yum! Okay, that's my first filling. I've got some avocado here, and I think I'm going to use it on the blinis. Oh, I've often thought no need for expensive caviar when you can use an avocado. <laughs> So, blinis, hot pad, a little bit of oil. You only want a little oil. It's a little pancake, isn't it? Yeah, it is. I'm going to use the soft goat's cheese, a bit of honey. There are so many things our chef's going to have to juggle at once. If they can keep calm, they'll be fine. Stunning. That is lovely, Mon. We have a volamont filled with a curry and mascarpone crab. We have a crostini with goat's cheese with honey and figs, and a blini with an avocado mousse with smoked salmon, a bit of lemon. So attractive, so attractive. Mm. If our chefs can make plates of canopies like that, I'm going to go home a very happy man. And I'll be one happy chef. 24-year-old Danny's poached and blowtorched quail was the signature dish of the day. I think the first thing I need to prove is that I'm not as nervous as I was in the last round, but Monica's skills test, dreading it. <laughs> Absolutely dreading it. Danny? Despite having one of the knockout dishes of the whole competition, you still look like we're going to shoot you. 15 minutes, off you go, Danny. You can do it, mate. Are you stirring that bowl or is it just your hand shaking? <laughs> Bit of both, I think. <laughs> You're halfway, you've got seven and a half minutes left. What have you done here, Danny? Well, I've just done a crab bellini, some dill, smoked salmon with gram masala and avocado, and a little fig honey volivant. I know they'd have looked smarter if you could have done a quinelle, and I believe you can do a quinelle, I just don't think you can do it if your hands are going to shake like that, no. Danny. Danny, I really like the, the crab bellini. There's only a little bit of goat's cheese in there, so it hasn't overpowered the crab and it's nicely seasoned. The salmon for me with garam masala is very odd. I don't believe the garam masala is a good idea with a, the with a salmon. I'd rather have it fresh and zingy with lemon. Nice idea to have a sweet volivant. You need to get those shakes under control because it's really starting to affect your cooking. Danny, thank you very much. Off you go. See you, Danny. I don't know why I'm nervous. I don't feel nervous. Um, shakes, on the other hand, <laughs> tell a different story. Um, they obviously do play a part, and in that round, they haven't worked to my advantage, really. Sous chef Ben's lamb with potatoes, peanuts and pickles split the judges. I think I've got some work to do to impress Monica, but that's OK, I'm willing to do that, and uh, I think I can. You can do this, Ben. You have 15 minutes. OK.
Yeah. You're halfway, seven and a half minutes left. Done? I'm done. What have you made? Got a crostini with uh, smoked salmon and dill, crab and avocado, bellini, and a fig, honey, and garam masala puff pastry sandwich. Actually, not a volivant. The very thick crostini works because there's so much of the smoked salmon mix on top. However, it's so strong in lemon juice and dill, it's not a pleasant canapé to eat. The volivant is just nothing special in a thin pastry like that, OK? The blini, I don't want to eat it, OK? I don't want to eat something that someone's mashed with their fingers. There is another big round to come. And I think you're fine if you can stop using your fingers and start using some spoons. Thank you very much, Ben. Off you go, Chef. Thank you. I don't feel great after that, to be honest. I made mistakes that I wouldn't usually do. But at least I get another chance to, to try and redeem myself. Richard's creme patissiere filled dessert also had the judges disagreeing with each other. I've got a little bit of work to do with Greg. I'd like to win in round, obviously. Have all three on board would be great. See you when the next round takes us, yeah. Richard, you are now in events catering. Mm -hmm. You must have knocked up the odd canapé. I have done a canapé off you, yes. You've got 15 minutes, off you go. OK. You're halfway, Richard. One minute left, mate. Yep. How's the volleyball? Perfect. You done? Done. <sighs> What do we have here? OK, we've got fig and goat cheese crostini, smoked salmon avocado bellini, and crab and creme fraiche volivant. I really like them. Thank you. Mmm. Mmm. Mm. Good volivant. Thank you. Mmm. Do another one, quick. <laughs> uh, I love the goat's cheese with the sweet and honey sweet and fig. It's just delicious. Richard, I'm smiling, I'm happy. You've made uh, good tasting canapes. And the way you've been working, wonderful, tidy. A real pleasure to see a professional chef working like you. Thank you very much. Show me about your apple in the last round. <laughs> <laughs> good work, mate. Thank you. Off you go, mate. Thank you very much. Thank see you. See you soon. Good lad, isn't he? Like this one. That was a great round for me. Um, yeah, couldn't have gone better. 26-year-old sous chef Sam won unanimous praise for his pan-fried scallop dish. I think Monica's got high standards after my first dish, but I'm confident I'll be able to, well, fingers crossed, get it right, whatever it is. Off you go, chef. 15 minutes. Just over halfway, you've got seven minutes left.
Done. Yep. What do we have here, Sam? You have got uh, goat's cheese and fig on Bellini, crab and avocado volivon, and crostini with just smoked salmon and dill creme fraiche. They look okay. Um, on a closer inspection, you see the errors because the volivon looks uncooked on one side. Mm. Okay. Tried and tested combination there with the crostini, cream cheese, smoked salmon, a little bit of lemon. Delicious. Despite the volivant not being cooked properly. The crab, it's nice and fresh, I love it. The bellini is disappointing. That is all goat's cheese and, and no fig. And it's a little doughy. OK. The bellini, too much oil in the pan. That's why you kept pouring it out. <laughs> mm. I think this was your third try at it. But that was you starting to get flustered, you know? You can't afford to get flustered in the next round with Marcus, all right? Chef, thank you very much. Off you go. Thank you. Thanks, Sam. A little bit nervy, wasn't he, towards the end? He was towards the end. Yeah, a little bit disappointed. No, I could have done better. In the last round, these four were very good indeed. This time round, the skills test, a little bit more nerves. That's it exactly, isn't it? The ones that were quite nervous got rattled and did not perform as well as in the first round. I think we've got one very good one, two that are allowing nerves to creep into their cooking, and one that's got a lot to prove. Exactly. I've still got high hopes for these chefs, and I'm fascinated to see how they get on with Marcus. Marcus Waring is one of only a handful of chefs in the country to be awarded two Michelin stars. A lot of his dishes are inspired by making the most of the British ingredients around him. I know these things like the back of my hand. When I was 17, almost 18, I worked in a hotel here in London and I happened to be put into a cold fish section where I would see boxes and boxes and boxes of Cornish crab. I've eaten more crab at the age of 17 than any other chef, I think. And I want to break it down while it's still warm. When it's cold, it tends to be a little bit difficult to get the meat out of the shell. There's meat all over the crab. You don't just go to the big bit and make it easy and the rest gets put into a stock. It's important that you go through the whole crab. For this, you need to get yourself clearer. Inside this claw, you've got this cartilage. Very important that that doesn't get through into the dish. You could eat that just now and you'd be very, very happy. It tastes incredible. For a chef, he needs to do more. And that's why we always try and stretch our imaginations when it comes to putting a dish together. Move this inside here. Pull out our brown crab meat. This, we blitz in a blender, add a little bit of cream to it, a little bit of seasoning, and you end up with this. It has a big flavour. I want both the brown and the white in this dish. I want to maximise the flavour. Here, a little white crab. Into there, we're going to put a little mayonnaise. Very, very finely chopped shallot. A pinch of chives. The sweetness of the crab and the onion and the mayonnaise. Beautiful. A little baby courgettes with the courgette flour. I'm just going to put a little bit of the meat inside and then we're going to put those into the steamer. I'm going to be serving the crab with the charcoal grilled bread and charcoal grilled courgettes as well. In this bowl, we have aioli, which is a garlic and saffron mayonnaise. I'm going to add some egg yolk and egg white, and that adds a little bit of texture to the aioli. these beautiful little baby artichokes. So a few little sea herbs. Just a little drizzle of oil. Crab meat is so beautiful. The pepper there is just a little warmth in the background. And there we have it.
Marcus's dish is crab stuffed courgette flowers, char grilled baby courgette, baby artichokes, brown crab meat, char grilled bread, and sea herbs served on a bed of aioli. This is a journey for me of the places I've worked and the places I've eaten. You said to me, Marcus, your final crab dish that you'd like to eat, this would be it for me. Chefs on your bench, you have a cooked crab. I love crabs. I think they're an amazing product with a beautiful flavour. I'm looking for a fantastic crab dish. What I'm not looking for is a crab salad. That's an easy option. There's some great ingredients here. 10 minutes to choose your ingredients, plan your dish. Up you come. I've got an idea, but I haven't got everything I need for it, so I'm either going to have to improvise or take a risk, I don't know. I'm going to stick to what I know best, classical cooking. One hour to do something splendid with that crab. Greg, this challenge is all about understanding the crab. Anyone can make a crab salad, that's not difficult. I'm looking for some skill and some flair. I really want to find that new crab dish that I've never discovered before. I'm looking for something special. I absolutely love crab. When I see a crab, I realise that there is a supreme being up there looking after us. Mm. I'm very happy with how I've performed so far. You've done one of these before, Chef, haven't you? Many a time. Over the moon with the first round, happy enough with the skills test, and I just keep moving on and trying to do my best. Sam, what do you think about this challenge? I'm happy about this challenge. Crab work with them day in, day out, so something I'm uh, confident enough in. Good, 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 good. So tell me what it is that you're making for us. I'm going to do, as I say, I stick to nice classical traditional. I'm going to do a nice crab gratin with some braised chicory. I'm going to take all the brown meat out, blend it up, and make a nice brown crab mayonnaise. Sounds like good. Yeah! Tell you what, mate, make extra. Put it on a bit of sliced bread for me on the side. I'll make sure you get through to the next round. How's that? Deal? <laughs> yep, deal. <laughs> Sam is doing a crab gratin. Classical. Love the idea. Crab with a hollandaise. A little bit of bread come on top. Serve warm. Wow, we know it works. One thing Sam's going to have to do, even though he's classically trained, we still need to see a little bit of spark, a little twist. What's going to make this dish stand out from the crowd? Crab mayonnaise, I've never had. If that's delicious, I'm making that the weekend. You've had ten minutes. Ten minutes have gone. I'm a young chef um, with a lot of flair, a lot of imagination and a lot of determination. Determination is what gets you through. I'm just going to go in with a clear head, forget about the last rounds and just go in, cook some nice food, see how it goes. Danny, what are you going to make? Ravioli with the crab, uh, with the pasta. Um, I'm going to do that with some grapefruit, some compi fennel um, and just some sea vegetables, really. How much is resting on this dish now for you? Um, well, I think quite a lot of rest on this dish, not just for me, but for everyone. It's a replacing the quarterfinals, so there's no, it's not messing around, is there? It's getting to you, this competition, mate, isn't it? Um, a little bit. I, I think you need that pressure, you need that adrenaline. Um, if you didn't have that, you shouldn't really be in the competition, I don't think. But your hands have stopped shaking, Danny. Yeah, uh, that's mainly because um, you keep bringing it up. <laughs> I'm so pleased that someone's doing a ravioli because that's a real skill. The thickness of the pasta has to be right and beautifully cooked. He's serving this with a beurre blanc. Grapefruit in a beurre blanc definitely works. Add fennel into the equation and you've got yourself a really good dish. 
After Danny's first round, really, our expectations have gone through the roof. And every time that guy goes anywhere near a saucepan, I'm expecting angels to start singing. You've had 25 minutes. You're nearly halfway. Greg's still mentioning the apple dish in the skills test to me, so hopefully let's get that one out of the way now and uh, get Greg on board. If I got through to the quarterfinals, I'd be ecstatic. It, yeah, can't describe it, it'd be amazing. Richard, what are you cooking? Uh, I'm going to do a crab ravioli. I've got some braised fennel here, and I'm going to do a little bit of compressed apple garnish. Why ravioli? Uh, I spent two years in Italy as a head chef in a hotel there. Oh, you've just set the bar very high. <laughs> <laughs> Can you do to this crab what you did to an apple? Uh, and I'll take it to a completely different level. I hope so. Looking forward to it. You took a beautiful apple, you made it boring, but the chefs really liked it. <laughs> Can you do something I like? Uh, I'll try, Greg, yeah. Don't worry about him. <laughs> We just worked in Italy for two years, which is fantastic. That means we're going to be in for a really good ravioli. But he's keeping it very, very simple. He's serving it with a little braised fennel. No sauce, nothing else. I'm not inspired by what's coming with it. I'm not sold on this. You have 20 minutes left. Ben, how are you feeling? I feel all right. Um, I know I need to do better today than I've done before, so pressure's on, but I'm all right with that. Good. You've got two years' experience, Ben, in the industry. You must be digging pretty deep right now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I am. I am, but I'm happy with what I'm doing. I'm doing a, a crab katsu risotto, so a bit of Japanese, a bit of Italian. Risotto's going to have some, some chilli uh, and ginger through it and saffron, and on top of that will be a, a lovely flash-fried breadcrumbs, crab claw. So a bit of fusion, a uh, little bit of spice, and uh, hopefully some good flavour. A risotto made with a stock of what? I'm using uh, white wine and water, and hopefully, there's, because I'm using sushi rice, the, the starch that should come out of that, similar to risotto rice. So hopefully it should create a nice creamy consistency. Where's the flavour? The flavour is coming from the, the wine, the chilli and the, and the ginger. Right. Are you going to be crushing this avocado? No. Good lad. Ben's making a risotto with sushi rice. Risotto made out of sushi rice? I'm not so sure, because there's a, quite a large starch content in it, and it could make it really sticky. He's making it with water and saffron. If anything, he should be using the brown crab meat in there. He should have made a little bit of stock with the crab shells or the crab head itself. But it is going to have a crispy crab's claw on the top of it. A katsu risotto. I've never heard of that before. Ricazzo. I'm not sure it works. I'd like to think I'm a, a creative chef. I enjoy coming up with new dishes. Creativity is one of my strong points in life, I think. You've got five minutes. Guys, you have one minute left. Time's up. Stop. First up is Sam, who has made a crab greta, served with braised chicory, raw chicory, avocado, grapefruit, and brown crab mayonnaise. I like the idea of the gratin. There's probably a few too many breadcrumbs on top, which making the mix a little bit on the dry side. Then you've got the samphire, the salad, you've got the avocado and grapefruit. It's a very simple, basic thing to do. It's the sort of thing that you can knock up at home. Yeah. And I was just hoping for a little bit more from you today. The mayonnaise hasn't worked. It's, it's too wet. And a crab gratin, for me, is you get a thin, crispy layer and that leads into softness below. Bursting, bursting full of crab with a little bit of sharp lemon. But what we've got here is something that's very strong of lemon and a big, thick layer 
of breadcrumbs across the top. Some crispy, some not. A little bit disappointed. In my mind, I know that I didn't do it as well as what I should have done it. Richard has made a crab ravioli using the white crab meat and served with braised fennel, sea herbs and compressed apple. I really like that. Thank you. I really, really like that. The full flavour of crab, the pasta is as light as a feather. I love the subtle flavours of aniseed through the fennel and the little sharpness of apple. Very, very good. For me, this dish is crying out for a bigger flavour of crab. You've just taken a little bit of the meat off the claw, which is an easy thing to do. What about the meat on the inside? That would have brought big flavour to this dish. Do you know what that dish is? It's calm and cool and collective like you but that doesn't make it a great dish. Sure. Do you know what? That's how I felt about the apple. Yeah, you'll tell you what, you're, you're getting the judges arguing with each other. That's a good thing. Well, it is if he goes through. It's not if he doesn't. <laughs> Thank you. Thank, Thank, you, very much. Thank, you, Thank you. you. It's quite frustrating splitting them. Um, I'd like to have them all in agreement, but hopefully I've done enough. Ben has created a chilli, ginger and saffron risotto with crab, sweet corn and spring onion, topped with a breaded deep-fried crab claw. I'm slightly uncomfortable with this dish because I've never had anything like it. But then neither of you. No. No. The crab claw, I find the breadcrumbs far too thick. So I'm having to chew through that to get to the crab. Your risotto affair, I like the flavour of. It's lime and it's saffron, but it's not crab. This was a crab challenge. You've taken the crab and not done a great deal with it. There's a little bit going through the risotto and there's a claw that's been breaded. When I mean, you had that, all of that beautiful crab to use and you've left, you've left it basically on your bench. Yeah, I don't feel great after that. It's not looking good for me, I'll be honest, uh, but we'll have to just wait and see. Finally, it's Danny's invention of an open crab ravioli made from the crab claws, served with seashore vegetables, parmesan shavings, diced grapefruit, and a grapefruit beurre blanc. I'm really surprised at some of your execution on this dish, Danny. I think the first thing I'm going to talk about, and you, you know exactly where I'm going, are these things. You need to take the cartilage out. You can't eat that. OK, and there's two of them in this dish. But I like the fact there's lots of crab meat. It's a crab dish. It's a, it's a crab open ravioli. I love the sea herbs. I'm really pleased that you've blanched them and you've cooked through them a little bit because they can be a little bit harsh. Everything's cooked on there beautifully well. There is so much I like about your dish. Mm. I like the sweet crab with the thin pasta. I like the butter sauce, and I like the bitterness of those vegetables. Tell you what, it's just sod's law, isn't it? You've got Marcus Waring in front of you, and he's got the two bits of cartilage that you've left in there. I didn't get any. Hopefully they can forget a little bit about that cartilage and just concentrate on the flavours that are in there. So, how did that go? That was really interesting. Some of them have got real potential, Monica. Who impressed you in your round? Of the four chefs, I would say Richard, because though he was nervous, first he assessed what was in front of him before he actually started. And for that reason, he actually produced the best plate of canapes. I want a little bit more from him today. But Richard as a chef, I think he's a huge talent. Danny was so strong in the first round and that quail dish still stands out for me but he wasn't coping well with the pressure. I thought he cooked well today. I think there was definitely glaring errors there. But here's a chef that masters his own dishes. I think he's one of the chefs we should be putting through. Without a doubt, I would like to see him cook again. Yeah, I agree. So we've got Richard and Danny through. Let's talk about Ben and Sam. 
sign for me, he's just started getting flustered, started to panic a bit. His choice of ingredients, however, worked really well. Sam, for me today, here's a chef that knows his way around a crab. And the surprise for me was the dish that he created. There was no wow factor about it. If I stay in a competition, I will go back to square one and I will do what I did in the first round and wow them with my next dish. Ben actually upset me. He went on to make a dish with the avocado and he mashed it with his hands. Yeah. Today, he really struggled with this challenge. This dish was going nowhere, Monica. It was Italian, it was Japanese, it was yellow, and it was very average. I don't want to go home today. I'd love another chance, so uh, hopefully that will happen. Hopefully I'll, I'll, get, uh, I'll get another chance. There is some very obvious potential here. You do remember the first round, but I think it's very clear which one of these chefs has to go home today. Pretty tough rounds, both Marcus and mine. And we've made a decision. The chef leaving the competition is... Ben. Thank you for the opportunity. Thank you. Good luck, guys. I'm disappointed, obviously, but I've learned so much in a short space of time, and this will just make me kick on in my career. I've got no doubt about that. This is just, uh, this is just the beginning. Chefs, you're now quarter finalist. Congratulations. Well done. I'm uh, quite tired. It takes it out of you, but I'll keep pushing for a smile. I'm going to up my level. I'm going to come out fighting, make sure no more little mistakes. Being in the quarterfinals of MasterChef, it's a big deal for me. Well, it's not the biggest deal. The biggest deal is getting the final. So I certainly won't be resting on any laurels. Quarterfinalists in MasterChef, the professionals, so can't get any better. Next round, I need to get everyone on board. Hopefully, stay calm again and hopefully just nail it for all three of them. Next time, it's the quarter-final. And the chefs must prove themselves to Marcus and Monica. Back to the drawing board, huh? Only the best of them will get to cook for the critics. It's a work of art. I'll take it home and hang up my wall and then lick it off the wall. Oh.